Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. It's not a very good situation going on in the Middle East. What is coming to Damascus? We're going to take a look at this from a prophetic uh, viewpoint this evening as we look at breaking news that's already happening uh, regarding Damascus. Latest article coming out, Obama administration considering strikes on Assad again. This is according to the Washington Times article by uh, Josh, Josh Rogan, October the 4th. Uh, for us, it's already October the 5th, but that's early wee hours of the morning for us, and you guys are still on October the 4th, I guess. Anyway, let's take a look at some of this, uh, what we, scripture everybody knows about, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and shall be a ruinous heap. But tonight we're going to look at some things that we've not looked at before. But let's look at some more breaking news that's been going on. Some of that you're probably already aware of. Russian Defense Ministry confirmed deployment of the advanced anti-missile system to Syria. Uh, October the 4th, as you can see on your screen over my shoulder there. They have moved in their advanced missile system as well. And of course, we already know that there are ships out in the Mediterranean, both Russian and uh, NATO force ships that are in the region. There have been quite a number of them there for some time. Russia also sending in, should be there by October the 10th, the last what I heard about it, their aircraft carrier uh, for this region as well. So, it, which brings me to a very troubling scripture, Damascus will fall, as we title this here. We go to Jeremiah chapter 49, and, uh, beginning with verse 23. Notice what it says on your screen here. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded in Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Now, in this one here, notice the wording is they have heard evil tidings. If we think about, uh, for example, in Daniel chapter 11, they hear tidings out of the north and out of the east. Remember what we uh, were speaking about the other day where John Kerry and the uh, leaked audio recording of him saying that he was for the attack on Syria back in 2013. He was pressing to do the attack and take out Bashar al-Assad, but there was not enough cooperation in the government for him to get his wish list. Well, it looks like now he's going to get it, according to the Washington Times. It looks like John Kerry is back on course for getting exactly what he wants. Well, actually, Washington Post. It's not the Washington Times. I apologize. Washington Post. Um, but anyway, notice what it says, though, after the evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Now, when we look at the sorrow on the sea, we know that seas are normally representative of multitudes of people and nations, for example. But in this case here, especially in modern times, I'm wondering if there's not going to be a battle at the, in the Mediterranean as well between the U.S., NATO, their allies, and the Russian ships. How many ships are going to be sunk over Damascus. What's going to happen? Russia bringing in more anti-missiles there and the United States talking about doing more damage to the Syrian government. We're going to go into that in a moment. Continue on. Damascus has waxed feeble and turned herself to flee and, her, and fear has seized on her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in the streets and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Very troubling scene indeed. Now going back to the news from the Washington Post, what their article was today, Obama administration considering strikes on Assad again, says the options are under consideration which remain classified, including bombing Syria Air Force runways, using cruise missiles and other long-range weapons fired from a coalition planes, and what ships? Did we miss something here? There is sorrow. Underline, there is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. And what do we have here? They're using cruise missiles and other long-range weapons fired from coalition planes and ships. An administration official 
who is part of the discussions, told me one proposed way to get around the White House longstanding objection to striking the Assad regime without a UN Security Council resolution would be to carry out the strikes covertly and without public acknowledgement, the official said. Hmm. Without public acknowledgement, just bomb everything. Nobody will know. Well, thanks to the Washington Post and Josh's very dedication to find out what was going on in this secret meeting, now we know. So the U.S. is not going to get away with it, just doing it silently. But then again, another breaking news. Earlier we, we, we uh, brought out that uh, there were mortar fires that landed near the Russian embassy. Well, the Russian embassy ended up getting hit by mortar fire today uh, as mortars continued to rain down around Damascus and different areas. They did hit it. So John Kirby's threat is becoming more of a reality. Uh, Russian interests are struck. I don't think they don't know what they're doing. They do. Uh, but, you know, I mean, facts are, guys, God's bringing judgment on Syria as well. We're going to get more into that in prophecy here in just a moment. Let's take a look at, though, of what Ms. Zakharova, uh, Zakhar Zakharova has stated as well. Uh, she said, an article here, refusing diplomacy on Syria may result in full-scale war, Russian foreign ministry. Wow. Uh, Ms. Zakharova is very serious about this. I wanted you to notice so what she says. TASS Russian News brought this out. The refusal of diplomatic settlement in Syria may result in full-scale war, which will lead to tectonic shifts in the whole region. Russian Foreign Ministry official spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said in the Right to Know program on TV, on TV's channel, TVT's channel. Lobby in U.S. is now really muddy. The water's and not allowing to reach an agreement, uh, Zakharova stated. The spokeswoman declined to answer the question on Russia's possible reaction in case the United States uses force against Syria. I cannot speculate on what will happen if this is the task of experts. My task is to explain why it is so important to stay in the framework of the agreements. She said, if the U.S. starts a direct aggression against Damascus and the Syrian army, this will lead to a scary tectonic shift not only on territory of Syria, but in the whole region as well, she noted. Well, of course, there is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Damascus has waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee. Not good, guys, at all. It's just not good. Let me show you another one here in the book of Amos. Amos, first chapter, verses 2 to 5. And he said, Lord will... The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn and the top of Carmel shall wither. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Damascus and four I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazel which shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitants from the plain of Avon and him that holdeth the scepter from the house of Eden and the people of Syria shall go into captivity unto Ker, saith the Lord. Now, by the way, Ker, some people look at this as a place, but you know, Ker is not actually a place if you look at it from the Septuagint. It's more like a ditch or a walled city. We're going to go into that in a minute. But another thing that caught my attention, I will break also the bar of Damascus. What bar maybe is the God of Israel speaking about? Well, let's back up and look at the photograph here. You notice the Russian defense ministry, uh, they're using their anti-missile system. Looks like giant bars all around Syria. Is this the bars that God is speaking about that he'll break? You know, not to mention, I realize that Russia is trying to do an incredible job to protect Bashar al-Assad. But there's something that God has in bringing about judgment, and that's the tough part. You know, we see the loss of life. We are concerned about that. And, and in this case here, like we've seen in the book of uh, Micah, I've shared with you how that Micah, the book of Nahum even, speaks about the Assyrians going into captivity. Micah shows how that uh, this is done through an internal struggle, that they go, that, that the land is desolate because of their own doing. 
And what did the United States do? They have backed, they have backed a, they have taken some of the Syrian people and they are using it to bring about um, a civil war and have been for the last five years. Don't think that even though the United States will be the one that attacks Damascus here very soon, don't think that it won't come without a cost. It's going to send the whole world spiraling. And as we speak right now, do you realize too, I just got a report from a friend of mine that showed me they're sending a huge number of uh, American-made uh, armors, tanks, you know, armored vehicles, everything else to Slovakia now, right there towards the border of Ukraine. It's getting serious, guys. Anyway, Kerr, let me just show you something about Kerr real quick. As we see here in verse 5, Syria shall go into captivity unto Kerr. Thus, the place when the Syrians were brought in Amos 9-7, which is where he speaks about them go, is not Kerr, but the deep or the ditch. The Septuagint, uh, the Bothru, or a pit, probably a translation of some variant rather than the, the word kit itself, comparing uh, the Assyrian Babylonian Kerr, a wall or enclosure, and an interior. That kind of reminds me of what we have, the refugees that are all inside of, um, that are in the different places that are throughout Europe. But in this case here, we're, 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 we have seen that all these Syrian refugees that are displaced, especially in Europe, you take the Calais jungle, you take, uh, even like in the case of uh, the Czech Republic, the ref what few refugees have come here, they go into confinement until they can determine whether or not they'll allow them to live in the public. Uh, you take it in Germany, they put them inside of uh, enclosures. A lot of the places there are especially confined, you know, to, to, to sort out the issue. Some of them just to roam free, that's true, but it is interesting to see that the word here, cur, actually represents some sort of a containment, the deep, the ditch, uh, or a, an enclosure, an interior, a walled up place. Just interesting to note, I figured I'd share with you on that there. The nation mourns us. Something else I wanted to bring to your attention. And he said, the Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn. Now, is this particular part of Amos, chapter 1, verse 2, right before the destruction of Damascus, are we seeing that God is beginning to show that the two witnesses are about to sound out for the sake of God from Jerusalem? Now, could it be before this happens or after this happens or in that time frame? It's just kind of interesting because it says the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn. Where? In Jerusalem. Now, if you go back and you look at Jeremiah's prophecy, we also find that there comes a not only Damascus, but a judgment will come upon Esau. Edom also will be judged Right during, right after the time of the destruction of Damascus, judgment comes upon the Adamites, the Edomians. And that, my friend, happens as a result of the two witnesses, and they're judged with plagues. Not necessarily with war, but with plagues. Earthquakes and everything else you can imagine. So that's something I caught when I saw in Amos 1-2, just before he speaks about that destruction that's going to happen to Damascus, as we see here, uh, you get down to verse 5, I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitants from the plain of Avon and him that holdeth the separate from the house of Eden. And the people of Syria shall go into captivity even into Kerr. But before that happens, says the Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn. Well, is there a scripture that goes with that? Sure, Zechariah 12, 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of what? Jerusalem. Habitations of shepherds shall mourn, remember? Habitation, uh, uh, excuse me, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. Friends, we are at the time of the destruction of Damascus. We are at the time of, of worldwide calamity, destruction in every area you can possibly imagine, and then judgment will fall upon Edom as well. 
Rome, who is running the, their Roman soldiers. It'll bring about the destruction of Damascus or the United States, no doubt. Russia will do what it can to defend Damascus, but when Damascus falls, then Russia will have to deal with defending their own homeland because it looks like the U.S. is going to also launch a strike there as well, or they're preparing to defend Europe in a counter strike that Russia may do as a result of what happens in the Middle East. Don't know for sure, guys, exactly what's going to happen, but it's not looking very good. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom, Chabrim, and have a great evening, even though we have no peace. Ain Shalom. Good evening.